All right. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome to Paint with Lovejoy. This is our daily demo. And just going to do a quick refresher to make sure it's all pulling up just fine on your guys' end. And as you can see today, I do not have something drawn on the canvas like I have in other demos. So we're going to jump right in and we are doing a kind of a pink to purple sunset. And then we're going to be putting a black silhouette of a palm tree on here. And we are going to have kind of the sky color and then we will have watercolor and possibly have that palm tree reflecting on the water. So again, this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for jumping on. And I did see a few of you guys hanging out uh, uh, waiting for it to start. So that's awesome. Thank you. So like I said, we're going to be making an abstract background in here and we will have a sky version and then we'll have a water version below. But right now we're going to, um, we'll be using the knife uh, just to kind of do the scraping of the thin layers on there. And we're going to start with a light pink. Um, so I'm pulling that white aside. A tiny amount of red goes a long way to make a shade of light pink. And each one of you at home might have a different shade of light pink than what I have on my plate. But whatever sh version of light pink that you like make that and then that's what we're going to apply as our first color. Now I do kind of want the horizon line kind of hanging out about four to five inches from the bottom of the canvas. So imagining that this is going to be my line where above it will be the sky and then below it is going to be my water. So I do want it the lightest area where the sky is meeting the water. So we're going to scrape on this light pink. Uh, we're probably going to cover, let's see, maybe about three inches in width and then the center of this light pink area will become the horizon line when we go in to do our silhouette. So I need to actually make more pink so if you have to make your shade of pink two or three times don't stress about the exact same shade because some variety in your background just makes it look that much more intriguing and that much more awesome. All right. And again, I am using a repurposed, regestoed canvas. So you see a lot of texture on there already. Um, because I'm doing these daily demos and I really don't want to have a house full of canvases, um, I am reusing my canvas canvases and my canvas panels to regesto on top of them so I can do another demo. So um, feel free to check out. There is a link in the description box below. Um, a link on how to gesso and repurpose some of your canvases at home. So for my first time in beginner painters, check that out. So that way you're not busting the bank on buying canvases. Uh, save your money and buy better paint or better brushes. All right. Mm. So good question we had with the knife. Um, should you use the palette, the metal palette knife or the plastic palette knife? And yes, good question. You can actually use either. And when I teach the classes, I generally use the plastic knives just because I can purchase more of those. And it's basically the same thing, just a uh, rigid structure that you're scraping paint against. If you want to go for the metal palette knives, um, make sure you get the stainless steel ones. Um, stainless steel is going to stay nice and shiny and clean and much, much easier to clean compared to, uh, let's see, I think this one's actually a regular steel, though I've got a lot of paint buildup on it, but your regular steel ones will start to corrode and rust. So spend the extra dollar or whatever and acquire the stainless steel knives. Um, but like I said, you can use your plastic ones. You can even use an old credit card to do the scraping. Use whatever you have at home. Oh, nice. And a few more of you jumping on. Thanks so much for checking it out. And another question was, where can you find the daily subjects for next week? They should be on my YouTube channel. And I think, I think it published. Um, but if you scroll down on my channel, I have another feed that says future um, or scheduled live posts. So just scroll down on my main page a little bit to find that. Um, and if not, I'll try to do a little tutorial on how to find that. All right, so now I'm actually making a slightly darker pink. And I will be going a little bit on top of the pink that I just did. And then also um, on the perimeter of this, this section, moving 
towards the bottom and towards the top of the canvas. And if you prefer more pink, more darker colors in there, or you prefer all purple, you can swap out any of the colors um, that I'm using today for the color of your choice. And maybe try using the knife in a different manner. You know, right now I'm just kind of scraping it along, keeping with this kind of horizontal um, direction. But just kind of play with it. Anything that's frustrated you, anxiety, being overwhelmed, scrape it away into your canvas. They can take a pretty good beating. Um, and just kind of notice how you feel after you've done this scraping method. I have told all my classes that I'm not a very stressed out person because of my painting style. That when I am stressed out, I go to the studio, I pull out a canvas, and I just scrape away all my irritation and anxiety. All right. Um, so as you're doing the palette knife, the next question was that she has the plastic palette knives, um, but didn't know how to use them on a canvas and it doesn't come out the same. So I'm on a canvas right here. Um, maybe don't push as hard. Um, on your bigger canvases, you are gonna have a bit more of a give. Um, and you'll have a little bit more uh, pressure uh, give that where textures will show up. Sorry if that was a little confusing. Um, but try using a little light pressure because where you're going to have the extra texture show up is underneath the canvas is a stretcher bar. And if you push too hard, you're going to keep a consistent line for where that stretcher bar is. So adjust your pressure and just play with it as you're getting coverage on your um, canvas. I personally um, I'm only doing the canvas for this tutorial. I normally paint on flat panels so I can do that pressure and not have to worry about the stretcher bars underneath. So check out um, some of the canvas panels and those are even cheaper than canvases. And in some of the next week's tutorials or demos, um, I'll be switching back to some of the flat panels. All right, so now I'm actually gonna move into a light purple. So same thing as making the pink pull some white aside tiny amount of purple goes a long way to make your light lavender or lilac color and get it to whatever shade that you want and we're going to be filling in going from the top above filling into the bottom and we're going to start light and work darker purple towards the tops and bottom of the canvas so same thing here we're just going to scrape it on top i will overlap some of the pink areas um, don't be afraid of overlapping your colors because with this scraping method when you overlap and you do use some of that pressure some of the color underneath will shine through or like I just did right there maybe I picked up some of the pink and scraped it into the purple so this is not an exact formula and this is really good to get out of your heads especially for those of you that are big planners and you want to know what the end result is going to be before you've started painting with the knife um, it's helpful to get you out of that groove. All right, I'm adding more white so I can make more of my lavender color. All right, and again, making the, my light lavender. Don't stress if it gets a little darker or lighter the second or third time you make it. The more that you mix your colors, the more your brain is recognizing what it takes to get to a certain color. So when you are a beginner painter, you are going to be a little frustrated with how much you mix your colors to get to a desired color. So be kind to yourself, because even though you're frustrated, your brain is actually taking in so much information. Um, and you are storing it, and it will show up at a later time. All right. I'm actually just carrying that light purple all the way to the top. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom, and then we're going to scrape the darker colors on top of it. All right. And again, oh, actually, if you want to try, so maybe make your lighter uh, light purple color, and then maybe grab a touch of the dark purple. I'm trying to get some so you guys can see. So maybe there's a little bit of the dark purple on the tip, and then you've got the rest of the light purple on there. Just play with that. Throw it in there and do some kind of what we call on canvas blending. I try to encourage all my students to be adult kindergartners. 
The only adult part is if you are partaking in an alcoholic beverage or an adult um, consumable. But otherwise, I want you to just embrace your inner five-year-old, have fun. This is kindergarten, you're all at home, so you can actually take a nap in your own comfy bed after this. Um, and you can have your snacks if you need to, but just have fun. This is a stressful time for the world, but it's also a time for you to reevaluate what you want in your life, what you want to keep, what things are important, um, how you deal with your stress. So be kind to yourself as we are all going through this. Oh, good. Glad you are um, using the panels and continuing to paint and just keep going. You're going to learn so, so much. All right. I was just checking to see if there was more questions on there. So feel free to just type them in. I am at a spot where I'm more comfortable with answering questions while I'm painting. Um, and these have been good questions today and yesterday, so I appreciate it. All right, so on our light purple, I'm actually making a darker shade. I'm gonna go for kind of a medium purple. And same thing that we did with the light pink or the medium pink. We're just gonna scrape it right on top of it, on the top and the bottom. And again, it does not have to be exact replication of what I'm doing. Just use this as a base for the general area of where you're gonna put your colors. If you are painting on a canvas like this, um, make sure you kind of paint the edges. And if you forget to paint the edges, just paint them black um, after it's all done and that gives it kind of a nice frame. But I can tell that I definitely have reused this canvas because I can see some of the colors underneath that I did not cover with the gesso. All right, so we've got a couple of shades of our purple on here. And I'm gonna go one shade darker, because again, I really like having a darkness on the top and a little bit more darkness on the bottom. So grabbing just that straight purple, even if it's got a little bit of the white mixture in it, I'm gonna slap a little bit on the bottom over here. Actually gonna go up to the top, slap some on there. And then I'll wipe any excess paint off and then just go back and kind of blend that darker color into it, because the medium purple is still wet. So we are doing a little bit of wet on wet blending with the knife. And again, play with that pressure. More pressure was gonna move kind of big chunk of pigment where light pressure will kind of keep it in place. And again, you are just five years old right now. Oh, and I forgot to tell everybody, make sure you take a deep breath. I didn't hold my breath today, so I forgot to remind you. And even if you're out during your day and maybe something stressful happens and you hear my voice in your head that says, just take a deep breath, then I consider that hugely successful because um, those are the times that we do need to remember to take a breath is when we stress out. Oh, nice. So we've got another question on there. It was, what was my most favorite live stream painting I've done on YouTube? Um, I would have to say each one that I'm doing, like today's probably my favorite at the moment, just because each time that I paint, I get more and more comfortable with painting on camera, answering questions, and just kind of stepping outside my comfort zone. And I do expect my daily demos to just get better, more efficient, and I am looking into how I can do a watercolor tutorial. That will likely be an hour long demo because I do need to have the watercolor dry in between a few layers. All right, so at this point, I'm kind of happy with my background. Again, we're gonna kind of have our uh, horizon line hanging out in the center of this pink, and then from below down, from that line below will be the water, and then we'll do the sky above. So first, I'm actually gonna kind of put that horizon line in there. We're gonna move to brush and black paint, and I'm gonna put a little horizon line all the way across. We're gonna have a little island hanging out, I think we're gonna have two palm trees from there and then we're gonna have one giant palm tree in the foreground where it's coming off here. And then from that horizon line down, we're gonna put some ripple lines for the water. So. <laughs> thanks, Janet. And hey, Kat, thanks for liking the colors. 
And I apologize for other people if I don't pronounce your name right. Um, I am not the best at doing that, so I may just call out your question. So please don't be offended. Um, but I am glad that you guys think that I'm super, super comfortable in front of here. Um, my first year of doing the YouTube videos, oh my gosh, I was way uncomfortable. So with practice, I have gotten better. And I kind of state it more for the fact that you guys at home are painting at home and stepping outside your comfort zone and it's scary. So I'm stepping outside my comfort zone to do these videos to show you that we all get better and we all grow. So hopefully you can use that as a bit of inspiration. All right, so moving along to just the pointy brush and black paint, we're gonna put our horizon line on there. And you can either just jump right in, start here and just make a line across. And I do recommend doing that. If you're a little kind of intimidated by it, what I want you to do is kind of figure out your first spot and about in the middle, you're gonna put a line there. Then I want you to actually take your hand, put your thumb down in that corner and then your finger where that you made that line, hold that position, move over to the other side of the canvas and then see where you need to put that line. Then you can do the same thing in the center and then we're gonna connect the dots. So options for you. And if you're like mine and it didn't even get level, totally okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Uh, it's, I'm glad it is much more noticeably comfortable over the last year. That's a good thing. And then we have another question. What is my opinion on Apple Barrel acrylic paint from Walmart? Um, and it's not as thick as other paint. Yes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the craft paint, and that's what that is, just because it is on such the transparent side and the dry time is like five minutes, super, super quick. So for some projects, that type of paint is really beneficial. Like if you're um, painting on wood or doing some of the folk art or even the one stroke painting. And if you haven't seen one stroke painting, uh, Google it. There are some amazing videos and that's definitely just good brush practice, um, but really amazing what can be done. So Google one stroke painting. So a lot of times in the art world, there are so many types of paint that sometimes you just get paint specific for the project you might be working on. Um, so as you get more into acrylic and canvas and fine art painting, um, I do recommend moving up to the thicker paint. The one that I generally recommend that's similar to what I use on the screen is the Liquitex student, uh, Liquitex Basics. It's a student grade paint. And professionally, I actually like the Liquitex um, artist grade, the soft body and heavy body. Uh, but I use a combination of student and artist grade in my work for various reasons. So it's good to use what you have at home. So use the craft paint if you have it. But if you are finding that you're getting into the groove even more, uh, step up and, and try the other paint and just see what works for you. Just because paint is super cheap doesn't mean it's good paint. So it is worth it to buy a little bit better materials and it'll make your process a little bit easier. All right. Right, yeah, so yeah, that paint does dry too quickly to do the wet on wet blending. You might be able to add some additives to it to extend the dry time, but because it's so thin, I don't know how much that will work for you. Okay, so as I was explaining all of that, you guys saw that I put a mountain on here. Your mountain can be as big as you want, as small. You don't even have to put a mountain on here. If you wanna continue your mountain across the other side, feel free to do that. I am gonna do three palm trees on here. So one's going to be a huge big one right here that's going to kind of come from the bottom of the canvas. Then I'll have a few more that kind of shoot off the side. And I'm going to do the big canvas or a big palm tree first, and I'm going to break it down um, in the steps that I would teach in my class. So pause the video as needed and pick it back up as you are doing yours. So I generally start with the tree trunk first, still using that small pointy brush. And I wanna put my brush where I want the tree, palm tree to end, the tree trunk. So I'm gonna place it right here and then just kind of allow gravity, medium pressure. I'm gonna pull this all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. 
And you do notice that, you know, some of my part, my paint starts to dissipate here. So just grab more black paint, go back over it. If it gets a little bit wider, that's okay. You do want to have a healthy tree trunk for your palm tree. And again, remember to breathe as you're making your line. Oops, there we go. All right, now you're going to add the palm, the palm fronds on there. And I generally recommend starting with the first two and they're going to kind of hug towards that palm tree. So starting at the end, our palm tree is going to kind of hug, curve towards the tree trunk. Then we're going to add the other ones again, starting from the end. I kind of, when I get to this point, I think of an umbrella or bicycle spokes sometimes. And I have always tended to do these in odd numbers. I have five on my palm tree right here. If you have seven or four or three or 20, um, that's just your palm tree. And I live in California and I can attest that there are so many different types of palm trees um, and they dance in the wind. So when we get into doing our uh, leaves, don't stress about how much your palm tree is wiggling or how weird it looks just painted. It's the personality of your palm tree for today. All right, so once you've got your palm fronds on there, we're going to do little leaves, little dash marks um, for each leaf. And again, this is where that light pressure will come into play. So I'm going to kind of hold it so hopefully you guys can see as I'm moving my brush. And you're going to start on the palm frond, and just think of each dash mark like a leaf on the tree. You do want these leaves to overlap each other. I'm gonna do it on both sides. And it is one of those things that the more that you put on here, the more overlapping there is, the fuller and healthier and fluffier your palm tree is gonna look. If you need to add a touch of water to your black paint, that will help with the fluidity and help you create some of those smaller lines. And when you've gotten to this point to where you've got one palm frond done, keep going. Don't judge your painting at this point because it does look really funky with just one fuzzy full palm frond. Do all your palm fronds and then step away from your canvas and decide whether you like or dislike your painting or if you want to go back and add something. If you can see space in between your palm fronds, I would recommend that you just go back and add more leaves. Oh, sorry, if you see space in between your leaves on your palm frond, go back and add more dash marks and leaves to overlap. And then as you have filled all of them up, prop your painting up, walk five to 10 feet away and look at your painting from a distance. And if you happen to get like one random funky crazy leaf in there, that's all right. Your tree's got some personality, embrace it. If you get to your third, fourth, fifth palm frond and you're finding that your brush strokes just get wider and wider and wider, wipe your brush off, wipe that excess paint off and that helps bring your bristles back together to make the, some of those smaller lines. And I see a few more questions popping up. So as soon as I'm done with this palm frond, I will look at those and answer those questions. Remember to breathe as you're doing this. It is not to your benefit and it is not healthy to hold your breath. Even if you need to just laugh at me for a minute, that gets oxygen into your system. Laughter is excellent medicine and every time you laugh or smile, endorphins are released into your body to make you feel good. So even, even when you're fake smiling, endorphins are still being released. All right, so let's see. Uh, thanks for liking the videos. I appreciate it and appreciate all your support. And let's see. I'm assuming this question is where do you get it from? Um, I'm assuming where you get the palette knives or even the paint. Um, and then the next question is artist loft brand. Okay. So for paint, um, buy from where you can. And if you see stuff on sale, go ahead and grab it. 
um, but make sure you use it. Don't just buy it and let it collect dust in your room. Uh, Michael's is a art store that I actually frequent quite a bit. They're Liquitex Basics. Um, sometimes you can pick those up on sale for four bucks up to 12 bucks. And like I said, those are a great brand to start with. Um, let's see, Artist Loft brand. I do use their brushes and I will take pliers and crimp the brushes for where the, um, where the metal meets the wood part because uh, most of mine, I use those as my student brushes so they stay in the water a lot and the wood starts to expand and warp. So if I use pliers and just crimp where the metal meets the wood, then I can uh, make the brushes last longer. Canvas from Artist Loft, awesome. Um, affordable, cheap, you know, definitely go for it. The only thing I don't recommend from Artist Loft is their paint. Um, they're gonna be kind of like the really cheap paint. There's a lot of filler materials in it. There's a lot of things that are gonna make your paint dry a lot faster than it needs to. I don't like how runny they are. Um, so I would recommend spending a little bit more and purchasing the uh, student grade, the Liquitex Basics. Uh, but your brushes and canvas on Artist Loft, I use actually quite often. Um, I also order my canvases. I don't always order the Artist Loft, but I'll Jerry's Artorama usually has some pretty good sales and shipping um, after $35, I think. And I always order enough in bulk that I get free shipping. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Blix Art Studio is another place to check stuff out. They are a bit more on the pricier side, so I don't order from them as often. But every time I go into their store, I feel like a kid in a candy store because it's just so yummy and awesome to see such a collection of shiny new art supplies. All right, so I am going back to the painting. I'm going to put a few more palm trees on here, recreating the exact same uh, process that I did for the first one. Put the tree trunk in put your palm fronds in and then little leaves on your palm frond. And then after we do this one, we're gonna go in with blue paint. We're gonna put some water ripple lines on here. And I think we're gonna put a yellow sun. I think, and that should conclude us. I think I will go a little past the 30 minute mark, uh, but I think that's okay. Like I said, I've been practicing for another segment that I'll be doing and just try to make sure that I can get these done in 30 minutes or less. So that way they invite me back to do the segment again. And as you're working on the smaller palm tree, don't worry if some of the branches and leaves overlap each other. As long as you get these on here, our brain's gonna go, oh yep, that's a palm tree. And then after that palm tree, I'm going to clean the brush really good. Um, actually, I'm going to move up to a different brush and I'll show you two ways to do this. I'll show you a way with the palette knife and then I'll show you the way that I usually teach in class with the brush. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the straight blue paint. And we do have a nice distinction between our sky and our reflecting sky on the ocean. But I want to make this a little bit more obvious that this is water here. So we're going to take that blue and we're going to do water lines. I am going to imagine that it's a calm day here. It's not too windy. So we're going to be doing lines all the way across, um, allowing our pinks and purples to shine through. So first method I'm going to show you is with the brush. And I do like the really flat brush. And it can be a big one like this or it could be the smaller size. And what we're going to do is we're going to treat the brush um, we're actually just going to use the end of the bristles. So we're going to keep the brush kind of perpendicular and just make these lines. And imagining that these are the water lines on our water. So I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on the brush. Let me actually load up the paint first. And you can do this with the straight blue. You can make a medium blue or you can even make a light blue. And likely I'll do a light blue and a dark blue on here for the demo. So you grab more paint and again, not too much pressure. Just making these lines. If you want a little bit more wave to yours, you can. And I am overlapping a few of the lines. Watch out a little bit for that tree trunk. If you go over the tree trunk, we'll just reapply the tree trunk. 
And this is one of the visual effects that when you step away from your painting, you're like, oh, that's, that's a nice calm lake or ocean or whatever we're looking at. So if you don't want to do it with the brush, you can use it with the knife, slightly different application. And you'll go through a little bit more paint with this, but you do want to make sure you get it on the end. And then same thing, holding that brush kind of perpendicular. And these keep with really straight lines. I prefer the brush just because I can have a little bit of a curve in it. But, you know, options. Try both, see what you like. Maybe you end up doing something different than I do. That's totally okay. And as we're getting to that point, um, please send me pictures of what you guys paint, even if it's of um, a different instructor's work, because there are a lot of awesome YouTube uh, painting instructors there. I just really like knowing that people are painting, whether you're painting my video, somebody else's, but this world will be a lot better if more people were calm, had some more stress relieving outlets, and painting is one of those. So share your work with me. And you can email those paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in social media, Paint with Love Joy. All right, so as you're doing your blue water lines, you do want to make sure that this comes all the way up to that little island because you want to imagine that we have water, you know, lapping up on that island. And I'm going to put a little bit more on that horizon line just because I didn't want it as black. And now I'm going back through and kind of overlapping some of my lines. And I like to have a bit more of the concentration of the blue towards the horizon line and then a little bit more open space towards the bottom of the canvas but totally your call, how much uh, you want your underneath colors to shine through. Awesome, awesome. I was actually just checking to see if there was more questions on there, but cool. Yeah, you guys just take my recommendations with a grain of salt and kind of find, you know, what works for you because just because it works for me may not be ideal for you, so. All right, so now I'm actually gonna make a super light blue. We're gonna do the same thing, just give it one more tone on there. And then we'll put a yellow sun. And these I am overlapping a little bit in the dark blue, a little bit with the other colors. I am overlapping my tree trunk a little bit. So we will go back over that with the black. But definitely get in the groove of getting out of your chair, looking at it from a distance, and then going, oh, I want more blue here, I want this here, I want birds in the sky, um, and adjust your painting to what you need. All right. All right, so while that dries a little bit, I'm gonna put a little sun right here, and then we're gonna do a few little yellow lines on our water. Again, imagining that the sun is reflecting on the water, and then I'm gonna go back with black and clean up that tree trunk. So for our moon, um, this yellow is a little more bold than I would like it, so I'm gonna put a little yellow aside and grab some clean white and do an about a one-to-one -one ratio, yellow and white. If you prefer just that straight up yellow or you even want an orange sun, feel free to switch your color for what you want. Now, I've found that it's easiest um, to place a dot where you want your sun to be and then make that dot bigger compared to trying to hold your breath and draw a perfect circle. So figure out uh, which way you want to do it. So I'm going to place a little dot where I want the center of my sun and then just kind of making that dot bigger. And hopefully my hand is not in the way as I do that trying to angle it. And then if you need to, you can come in at kind of a 45 degree angle and place paint on there a little bit thicker. Um, and when you are using student grade or transparent paint, that's a way that you can increase your opacity. All right, and then taking that same color, and again, you wanna be really careful since we do have blue on here, I'm not gonna be mixing a whole lot, but just getting a hint that we have some of these layers. And if you have the time, let your blue paint dry before you do this, because blue and yellow will make green. Um, and though that does look good in the water, if you don't want it on your painting, let your paint dry. All right. Oh, excellent. We've got Jean that's gonna paint the sailboat and the lighthouse from yesterday.
very, very cool. And make sure you send me a picture of what you paint. And Janet, I agree. I try to buy stuff on sale as well. And when I see stuff off season that I know I use in my classes, I buy it like it's going out of, out of business. Um, I have ended up with some art supplies that I ended up not using for classes that I purchased and found ways to either sell them to somebody else or use them into a new project. But you're not alone in that thought. Art supplies are not cheap. All right. Um, let's see, if you want to add birds in the sky, go back to old school, making that kind of squished M shape. Uh, let's see, I want three birds. Let's see. If you want to put your sailboat in here, if you want to put a lighthouse, if you want to put people hanging out, if you want to put a shark in here, please make it your own. And then send me pictures just so I can see. So not too bad. I think I only went about five minutes over for 30 minutes. Excellent. Um, really, really honored again every day that you guys show up and hang out with me. This really keeps me going and getting good structure. So thank you for holding me accountable and hopefully I'm holding you accountable to get creative every day. All right. So leave any suggestions of what you want me to add to, uh, the list for next week or the week after. If you go to my main page and scroll down, you should be able to see a feed that says future streams. Um, and they all have the same little thumbnail. I don't update the thumbnail till the end of the class. And yeah, so I will be here tomorrow pretty much every day unless I put on the little thing that I can't make one of the days. But my studio and setup is in my bedroom now. So there's no excuse. I will be here. <laughs> um, oh, Rainbow Unicorn. Cool. I will add that. That should be probably like the cupcake I think will be popular. So yeah, um, hope you guys have a great day, a nice holiday weekend. Please be safe with everybody. I know they're doing a whole lot of online services, so hopefully you can still feel a part of your community and you are certainly a part of my community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, until next time, I will see you guys then. Cheers.